to the online lectures for information security. In today's class, we'll be discussing the three topics. The first one is secure the security system development life cycle model. Now within the previous class, we have studied SDLC. Now within this, we are going to implement security within the software development life cycle. Now all the different phases that we've studied, the six phases we've studied, those phases are going to be same. Whereas within the six phases, you're going to implement this security mechanisms that are going to take place at each of the different levels. Now here, when you're implementing the security within the SDLC life cycle, now this process should be adaptable so that it can support the information security project. That is any changes that you're making, it should, you should be able to implement them within the, so that you can provide the best information security. Now, as you're implementing security, within security, first to implement security, the first step is you need to identify what are the different threats that the organization is facing. When you won't know what are the different issues that the organization is facing and who is responsible for controlling these issues, it becomes easy for you to identify how you're going to implement security, how you're going to implement the security, or you can say, uh, what is the different policy also that you're going to add so that you can have a better level of security. Now the secure SDLC, it is a continuous program, but it is not, you're not going to take some random steps in here, but it is a continuous process. It is not a goal. You cannot achieve it at one instance. The first phase, that is the investigation phase, the most important phase. Now within the SDLC approach, we have identified that this is within this, first you identify why the system is being developed and then you identify what is the cost of developing. This cost is identified based upon the outcomes, goals, constraints of the project. Now this step is going to be, this is similar to the SDLC. The step that is added is the EISP. Now in this, you, the EISP stands for Enterprise, Enterprise Information Security Policy. Now this phase is going to begin with the statement of program security policies. That is what are the different policies that are used by the organization. Now. When you identify what are the different policies that you're, that you're using within a particular system so that you can implement security, you get to identify a different teams that are there. Now these teams can be grouped into different employees. It can be a team of different employees. It can be a team of contractors. Now these people are going to analyze the problem. That is what is the issue that you're facing now that issue is identified. When you identify the issue, you can try and remove the issue or you can implement more security at that specific area. And then you're going to provide feasibility analysis. The next is the analysis phase. Now within the analysis phase, all the information that was conducted at the investigation phase, this is going to be studied. Now, when you're going to study all of this previous information, you're also going to do a preliminary analysis of all the security policies and programs that a particular organization is currently using. Now, when you get an idea of the different policies and programs that an organization is using, you get an idea what are the current threats that the organization is currently facing and what are the different controls that are associated with this that is who is responsible for controlling when an attack is being launched on a particular area of the organization this is the one step then the other step is you're going to identify if there are any legal issues that could impact the design of the security solution that is if there are any court cases that are pending now in here that court case is going to restrict the development of the project or some specific areas you are you won't be able to release any project that all legal issues will also be considered before you start any development of the new project then the last and the most important thing is you're going to identify what are the risks within the organization. Now, when you know the risk, you will be able to identify how you're going to manage those risks. Now in here, first you're going to identify the different risks. Now, when you identify the different risks, you're going to assess the risks and evaluate. That is why in the first place, this is the risk. 
and then the level of risk. Now in here, you might, in here, when you identify that a specific risk is being encountered, you're going to identify the level of the risk. That is how much it is going to impact the organization. The level of impact. It is going to impact 50% of the organization or 20% or it is like 2%. How much it is going to impact the organization that is going to be identified. Now, if suppose a risk is, you identify two risks. One is going to impact 50% and another is 2%. So you're going to first start working upon the risk that is going to impact 50% of the organization. The next is the logical designs. Within this logical designs, you're going to develop a blueprint for information security. Now, within this blueprint for information security, there are different areas within an organization. You've got the different departments, financial departments, backup department, the different departments. So in here, you're going to identify which specific areas require more security. Now, when you identify which requires more security, you can make a plan and work upon them. Then you also have within the logical design phase, you also have an incident response action plan that is in specific times what are the different steps that you're going to take now the first one is continuity planning within continuity planning this is going to focus on what or how a business is going to continue how the business will continue at an event of loss now this can be loss of information when you've lost some specific information, how you're going to keep continuing your business. Now in here, you can continue your business by if you have some any, if you have got files backed up on a specific server, you can download the backup files. Then incident response. Now incident response means if suppose an attack is launched on your organization, what are the steps that you're going to take when an attack is being launched? Now when an attack is being launched, you can identify how you're going to minimize the effect of the attack or whether you're going to launch a counter attack a counter attack means you're also going to issue an attack on the attackers program now when you, if suppose your attack is successful means that program that has attempted to log in into, into your system you can destroy that program the next one is disaster recovery within disaster recovery you're going to identify if suppose a disaster is event that is an earthquake a natural calamity any of this occurs or tornado anything how you're going to recover your information how you're going to recover information now this recovery information this can be again taken up from the backup files the next phase is physical design now in here Within the logical design, we have made different blueprints. Now within this physical design, what you're going to do, you're going, you're going to identify what are the different technologies that will be required so that you can implement this blueprint and you can provide security. Now, when you identify what technology is being used, you are also going to identify the different alternatives. That is how you're going to provide security. An alternative of security, you might be using some specific tool to provide security or authentication for authorized persons to log in within the particular server, you're also going to have a firewall or you can implement an intrusion detection system. Now, what is an intrusion detection system? If any person tries to unauthorizedly access your system, your a message is going to be sent across the different servers that some person has try, tried to access into the organization system. Now, when you know a person is going to, has got access to your system, how you're going to safeguard the files that will be identified now when you've got different alternatives you're going to finalize a perfect design that you're going to implement then at the end of this phase you're going to do a feasibility study so that you identify whether the organization that is developing this particular software whether they are completely ready to, de to develop this particular software Now in this physical design phase, now in here, there are different stakeholders or different parties that are involved within an organization. Now in here, all the different parties, or you can say the different stakeholders that are there within the organization, each of them has got their own work so that they can approve the development of the particular project. Everyone has got their vote so that they can say that this isn't yes from the team that they can go ahead to implement this particular project.
The next phase is the implementation phase. Now this implementation phase it is again similar to the SDLC. Now in here, the security solutions are acquired, tested, implemented and tested again. Now in here, now the different solution that you're using, these solutions, this can be made by the organization or this can be purchased. So you're going to identify whether you're going to build them or you're going to purchase them. When you're going, if you're purchasing them or even if you're building them, you're going to test each and every criteria. That is how this is working, whether it is giving you the exact result, whether it is accurate, whether it is secure. If you're going to perform different levels of testing and then you're going to implement that particular component within the to ensure security. Now, when you've completely implemented, you also need to provide training and you need to educate the customer that is going to use this particular software. Now, whenever a new software is being built, it might have some different steps to use a particular software. So in here, you're going to identify the different steps that you're going to take and you're going to train the customers so that they can efficiently use the software that has been developed. Finally, the entire tested package is presented to management for final approval that is in here the last soft the entire software that you have built this software after doing all the testing part you need you are going to show this particular project to the management now this management is again going to check each and every features and they are going to approve the particular project for release The next phase is the maintenance and change phase. Now this maintenance and change phase, this is the last phase and it's got, this is the sixth and the last phase. Now in here, this phase is like a continuous process because in here we are living in a world where every time a threat is being increased. Every time a software update comes, it has got its own loopholes. Every time you need to repair the damage, you need to restore the information. So in here, we will take an example to understand this maintenance and change field. Now within this uh, latest Windows update, we've got this, you were not directly able to connect to the Wi-Fi. You had to connect with the LAN because these LAN drivers, they automatically got disabled. You weren't able to connect to your Wi-Fi. There's one example. The another example was that whenever you end, you keep your system into the sleep mode, the sleep mode, was causing the machine to start up on its own, like power up without any user input. You're, that is, you're not even giving any input. You're not pressing a key. You're not moving the mouse, anything. But this resulted in powering up the system. So in here, these are the different loopholes that might occur with every update. So in here, you're going to get a security patch that is going to fix this loophole. Then you got this Wi-Fi drivers got installed and the sleep mode disability also came up. The next topic is securing professionals and organizations. Now, whenever you want to implement security for a particular program or for a particular person, for a particular program or for a particular organization, it does not require one person's work. It requires a teamwork. Now, these team peoples are need to be professional. They need to be well versed with each and every technology or in each and every security policy that is being launched or which is being used in in order to secure the software. Now in here, whenever you're implementing the security professionals and organization, the senior management plays an important role. Now in here, the senior management plays an important role because in here, the senior management, that is upper management people, are the persons that are going to decide what are the different policies that you're going to use for a particular organization. What are the different procedures that you're going to do? What is going to be the plan for developing a particular software. Each of the th things are going to be governed by the senior manager. And if suppose one particular person or a specific software engineer is deciding, is decided to implement some specific policy. Now in here, when the sp specific engineer, he, he wants to implement some security. Now in order to implement security, he requires support He requires support from the administration and he also requires the technical expertise that are required to implement the particular security policy or a security solution.
Now, what is the senior management? You've got the CIO and the CISO. Now, the CIO is the main head. Under CIO, the CISO works. Now, the CIO can also be called as the vice president for information. The vice president of information or the vice president of system or normally the name chief information officer. Now this person is the senior technology officer. He's the senior most person that is going to look over all the different policies that are going to be administered. Now this, the responsibility of this chief information officer is to advise the senior executives on strategies and plans that is in here he's the head so under him he's going to have some senior executives he is going to tell them what is the plan and what are the different strategies what are the different technologies that you're going to use or different policies that you're going to use in order to implement security he's the person who is going to like uh, dictate each and every goal technologies policies that you're going to use and the cio he is directly going to report to the president or the company owner that he is answerable to these two persons on the different strategies that he is implementing or how it is going to affect the organization now under the cio ciso is going to work now who is ciso ciso is a chief information security officer now this chief information security manager he can also be referred as the manager for security Now the, the job of the CISO, he, now in here, as I told you that CIO is going to dictate the goals, the practices, technologies. Now this CISO is the one who is going to implement all of this. Now in here, this are going to be implemented. He's going to assess each and every policy that is to be implemented. He is going to manage and the implementation of information security within the organization. And this CI, the CISO is going to report to the CIO. Now coming on to the information security project team. Now in the information security within the project team, you're going to have persons that has got more experience based upon technical areas and non-technical areas. You're going to hire persons that are well-versed with the technologies to, secure, to safeguard the technical aspects, whereas the non-technical aspects. Now in here, a few terms that are going to be used in here or the within the team, you're going to have champion. Now who is a champion? Now this champion, He's a senior executive. Now the senior executive, he's responsible to promote the project. He's going to promote the project and he is also going to ensure that you get financial and administrative support to build your particular project. That is the job of the champion. The next one is the team leader. Now this team leader can also be called as the project manager. Now in here, the job of the team leader is, he's going to identify who are going to be the managers or the staff unit managers. That is who is going to handle a specific team of people. And this person, he's also going to understand how you're going to manage the project management, personal management, and how you're going to deal with the different technical requirements of information security. In here, you're going to manage two things. That is the project and personal management. Apart from that, what are the different technical requirements? that are also going to be seen by the team leader. He is the one that is going to be responsible for embedding different changes within the technologies. The next one is the security policy developers. Now in here, these security policy developers, these are individuals who understand the organization culture and policies. That is how the organization work what are the different policies they implement, you're going to identify those. That this person is going to have the entire knowledge of the different policies, the culture that are being developed within the organization. And you also get to know what are the different requirements for implementing a successful policy. What is the requirement to implement a policy successfully? Then the next one 
it is the risk assessment policy now what is the risk assessment policy within this risk assessment specialist you are going to have people that are going to understand the financial risk that is suppose this project fails how much loss the company is going to deal uh, how much loss this company has to deal with all the financial aspects they are going to identify then they are going to assess all the techniques that are being used and they also identify the value of assets that is how valuable the information is you're going to identify now when you identify the value of information you're going to put in more of it or invest more amount of money so that you can safeguard the particular assets and you also identify the different security methods that are used now in here when you identify the risk to minimize the risk you're going to use certain security methods the next one is security professionals now these security professionals these are dedicated trained people or you can say well educated specialist these you're going to have well educated and trained people and these people are trained in all the aspects of information security how you're going to identify the risks how you're going to resolve the risk and this all the aspects are going to include technical as well as non-technical areas now how you're going to safeguard the technical areas how you're going to safeguard the non-technical areas the information can be taken from these people the next is the system administrators now these system administrators these are people that has got the primary responsibility for administrating the system that is what is the hardware working properly taking the different updates for the hardware any bugs all of the things are going to be handled by the system administrators then the last one is the end users now these end users means the persons that are going to use the system or the people that are going to be directly they're going to have a direct impact by the development of the software so these are the different roles within the project management team next comes as the data responsibilities now in here there are three types of responsibilities you've got data owner data custodian and the data user now who is the data owner now in here this data owner he's responsible for the security of a particular set of information he is going to secure one specific set of information and they are also going to have different senior members that are going to help you in securing the specific part of information these data owners they usually determine the level of the data classification that is how the data is being classified now in here as you're dealing with one specific information they are also going to tell you what are the different classifications of these data what are the classification associated with this data as well as what are the different changes that you're going to do so that the organization is satisfied by storing this data the next is the data custodians now data custodians are responsible for the storage maintenance and protection of information now the duty of the data custodian is to oversee the entire data storage he's going to overlook how the data is being stored where it is stored what is where are the backups stored and what are the different policies that are used to secure this data this all job is done by the data custodian then the last one is the data user now within this data user the end system users that are going to work on the system that is being developed that is called as the data users now in here everyone that works within an organization 
all of the people are responsible for the security of the data whatever task you're doing if suppose access you're doing a some specific task on some restricted information so you should now you should not leave your credentials anywhere so that any person can access your data so in here each and every person that is using the data his job is to secure this data so the three responsibilities as the data owner who's going to safeguard some specific information is going to make classifications and any changes that are requested by the organization data custodian is responsible for storing maintaining and protecting the data and he's also going to oversee the, how you're storing the data where are the different backups and what policies are required or what policies you're using to secure the data whereas data users in here every person that is going to make use of the information to complete their daily job are called your data users and everyone who is making use of this data they are responsible for security now in here you got the different communities of interest now in here communities of interest means what are the different how you're going to group different people in some specific areas and now in here you've got different organization like information security management and professionals then information technology management and professionals then organization management and professionals so these are divided based upon the security management technology management and organization management based upon this we are grouping the different set of people the next is information security it is an art of science now in here Within the level of complexity within the today's information system, the implementation of information security is being described as a combination of art and science. Now in here, the concept of security is very artistic. Now, why it is artistic? Because it is based upon the way an individual has got an input of the different system technologies that are used or the different, or how you're identifying the different policies that you're going to use. The next is security as an art. Now in security as an art means it does not have any hard or any fast rules. Now these hard and fast rules, you do not have any hard and fast rules for installation of security mechanisms. That is any security mechanism that you're using, it, it is not going to have any hard or any fast rules. Whereas you also do not have any rules that are going to be universally accepted. Some rules are for some specific area or for specific organizations only. And it will, and also in here, you do not have any manual for implementing security because information security, it is a process. It is not a goal. So you're not going to have a manual. You need to implement security then based upon your access or based upon the usage, you have, you have to identify whether you're going to upgrade the security or this one is the one that is required. And to identify and implement security, it is a complex procedure. Because in here, this it is complex because you need to identify how the user is going to interact. How, how is there going to be interaction between the different policies, the different technology and different controls. The next is security as a science. Now in here, security is considered as a science because in here we are dealing with technology that is developed by computer scientists and engineers. So technology is designed to perform, to give the best rigorous performance now even if the technology that you're using even if it is very complex many scientists agree that in here based upon specific conditions of a specific computer system you need to identify how you're going to implement the specific policy now in here if you focus on different almost every fault every security hole within the information system that you're developing, it is a result of some interaction between hardware and software. Now in here, some hardware and software means if suppose some data is not to be accessed by the software or some data is not to be accessed by the hardware. So in here, if there is some type of access, then it might result to a fault within the system. Now in here, security is also considered as science because in here, every software that is being developed, it is a time boxed software that is you need to develop within the specific time you need to follow specific constraints you need to follow specific cost so in here when you've got so many limitations it it becomes difficult for you to resolve and eliminate the different faults within the system 
now security as a social science now in security as a social science it is it is based upon the behavior of individuals how they are interacting with the system now in here security administrators can greatly reduce the level of risk caused by the end user that is the customer and it becomes more acceptable and supportable security profiles now this can be achieved when you have better communication between the different end users better communication between the different technologies and the different policies that you are going to use this is the end of the first chapter